Okay, so now we've done got the cylinder head CC'd on the intake runner. Now we have it mocked up on the flow bench itself. And the first thing you've got to do is make a manifold to smooth out the air entry going into the port itself because you don't want to catch a sharp edge like that. Second thing is setting up a, a device to where you can manually open the valve and get your reading. So what we've done is we've done turn the bench on and checked our system for leaks because we're using a gasket here to seal this and we've got a spark plug in a spark plug hole. So what you have to do is take that leakage if you have any. The ideal is to have zero, but we can compensate for that in the Flowcom meter here. So you go in and you put all of those perimeters in and then you're ready to begin your test. Once you have it zeroed out and it's showing zero when the flow bench is on, we're ready to start. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn this thing on and we're going to go through the process. This particular test we're using 28 inches of mercury that's important as well because when your flow bench is calibrated to a certain uh, inch number that correlates to the actual flow so this bench you see it's right at the 28.7 mark so good to go there doing when you see me changing the dial is I'm changing the scale so that we're still operating in the motor of the flow bench's capacity because that's what we're pulling against is that motor inside of here. Point 
flag. When doing flow testing, it's really important to have an established baseline. And in the case of this trick flow head that we're giving you the behind the scenes look at, we realized that looking through David's huge amounts of files that we didn't have a good specimen for a trick flow 170 cc runner twisted wedge head from back years ago. So what we're going to do is we're going to flow test one of the stock runners so that we have a control to gauge our progress from. And so we're going to put this thing through the test and we'll be able to put both sets of numbers into the IOP program. And the IOP program will tell us if Eric's making moves in the right direction or in the wrong direction. So stay tuned because this is going to get really good. Okay, so I just finished up flowing this stock port here. First of all, I apologize for the noise in the background. DV's over in the porting room doing some work on some 289 heads still. Um, but this is what we got. This here's the actual flow numbers from the stock port. I'm going to switch everything over and do the exhaust side just like we did on this particular set right here. And uh, once we get the numbers, we'll put all of this into the program that I was telling you about and let it tell us what's going on. As well, we just finished up the flow testing on our trick flow head. And before we get over to the computer program portion of the deal, I want to give you the caveat of our exhaust flow testing. See, here in DB Shop, we do all of our testing without a pipe attached to the head. Why do we do that? A couple reasons. First, DB's 50 years plus experience, he's been doing it without a pipe. So that's just his thing, and it gives him a good way to compare cylinder head to cylinder head. Two, when you put a piece of pipe on there, it's not always going to be the same radius or shape, and so your results could come up different. So instead of putting a piece of pipe on there that could artificially change the number, so to speak, we decided that it's best just to do it without the pipe and go with that and it gives you an accurate representation between uh, looking at cylinder head to cylinder head. So let's get started on this uh, IOP program and you're going to love it. Okay, so the age old question becomes, now that we have our flow numbers, what do you do with them? You know, what's the approach you should take in determining whether you're going in the right direction or not? Okay, and that's where this program really shows its worth. Just looking at the raw numbers here, you can see that pretty much up until the upper lifts, the stock head delivers, uh, I mean the stock runner delivers better flow. Now, it's got to be pointed out that once you reach about 300 thousandths lift, the port itself starts to determine your flow numbers. Below that point is a product of the valve seat itself, okay? And having the valve seat perfect makes all the difference in how the combination works because you know we've seen some huge differences down low and then this once again getting into controversial subjects a lot of people say you don't want a lot of low lift flow but 
we go against the grain when it comes to that because think of it this way as soon as that valve is opening it comes off the seat say ten thousandths our job is to stuff as much air as you possibly can in that cylinder okay and the sooner you can get the column of air moving into the cylinder the better off you are so we try to maximize low lift flow because that can mean the difference in winning and losing but like I said that's a controversial subject and other people have different thoughts but this is what we use okay so from this I'm gonna put the camera on the tripod and then you'll be able to see the differences of the graphs when I do that you know but this video here was meant to be a behind-the-scenes look of what we do and how we do it so to speak so you know if you want to compare a chart of the CFM between the two you know you can easily do that and see the gains that you're getting between the flow numbers of the standard port and the modified ports okay you can see the CFM per square inch and chart that out same way with the coefficient of discharge all right mean port velocity this here will tell you how fast the air is moving through the port which is very important and then port energy so there's a lot that can be done with this program that I'm not even scratching the surface with well folks that wraps it up you know, if you want to learn more, like I said, please head over to DV's channel. Check out the IOP program because he goes into really good detail explaining the ins and outs of it. But the purpose of this video was to show you the behind the scenes look of what goes into flowing a cylinder head. Now, a couple things that I do want to emphasize is when you're taking your initial measurements, You've got to be very careful to make sure that your measurements are precise, okay, because the program is only as good as the variables that you put into it. So the more accurate you get your measurements, the more accurate results you'll get. Um, when it comes to flow testing on the flow bench, make sure that you're using the fixture for the bore size that you're using, okay, and then if you're building a set of trick headers and you have the opportunity of flow testing um, a piece of pipe to represent the radius of the pipe coming off of the head I suggest doing that but for 99.5 percent of the other time we do it without because it gives you an accurate representation between head to head um, it's just what we do um, now like I said a lot of these things that I have talked about are very controversial on the internet but I want to point something out to you when it comes to building engines everyone is confined to the same restrictions and that is physics you can't cheat physics so this program takes the black magic part of engine building out of it you know Having flow numbers is good, but it's all in what you do with those flow numbers after the fact that determine if you win or lose. So just keep that in mind. And if you really like what we're doing, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, help spread the word to all of your friends because when I reach a thousand subscribers, I've been dying to tell this, but when I reach a thousand subscribers, I'm going to do something that's going to be really cool. I'm going to take every single name that has subscribed and put their names into a hat. Okay? And I'm going to have some really cool things that I'm going to give away that 
is very significant to Casper. So tell all of your friends to subscribe so that we can get this done a lot quicker. So this is Andy from Unity Motorsports. Catch you later. Yeah.